Hey, good people, how you doing? David Taub here. We're gonna get into what I call pseudo bar chords. And these are very, very similar to bar chords, except we're not barring entirely with our first finger just yet. But I wanna get your fret hand in a little bit more shape to get ready to play the shape with bar chords, right? And we're gonna do pseudo bar chords on the sixth string root and then fifth string root. And we'll have exercises and we're gonna start putting these together and making music. And these are great chords that are a lot of fun. They sound great. You could try substituting them in some of your songs for the full bar chords. And this is one step closer to playing bar chords is giving you this fret hand strength and proper technique. Now the shape for this, much like our power chords, is going to stay the same as we move this around. That's what's great about these movable chords, right? So we really have to concentrate on that, getting that fret hand fingers in that proper position. If you have a second, please subscribe to the channel. You know, subscribing to our channel, that really helps us to keep bringing the content. Leave a comment below. Let us know how you like this lesson. Let us know what lessons you'd like to see in coming videos. If you like the video too, um, give it a thumbs up. Click the like button. And we so appreciate that. Now, these have some very interesting names, the names of these chords. And each one changes because of the relationship to the B and the high E, but don't let the names of the chords intimidate you. This is more about the sounds and the fingering and getting ready to play full bar chords. So let's go over the shape of this chord in depth, and then we're gonna take it and move it around. Third fret low E string is a G, right? So we're gonna play this chord. Right, nice sounding chord. So what I'm doing here is first start off by playing a G5 or G5 power chord. First finger on the root. Low E, put your third finger on the A string fifth fret and your pinky directly below that on the D string fifth fret. That's our G fifth power chord. Now, here's what we have to do though. You wanna get your second finger down on the fourth fret on the G string. So you have that note, right? So, so, so far you have this. Then, when you're playing this low E string, you wanna hook your finger. We're not barring it yet. We're going to hook it. And you can see this on the close-up. So we're hooking it, and you're hooking it on that third fret in a way to not touch the high E or the B strings because we want those strings to ring out open. So you get this. So you hear the B and the high E. So you see this finger is hooked, not flat, and it's hooked in a way, and my wrist is not up because then you're going to be hitting the high E and the B strings. So you have to keep that wrist down and really hook that finger over. So get all those notes to ring true. Right? So that's a pseudo bar chord because we're not really playing a full on bar chord where we're barring yet. That's coming up. The great thing is we're adding the second finger on that fourth fret because we're getting used to that shape, this shape of these three. And that's really important for major and minor bar chords. We're going to be going over this a lot in the coming lessons. But for now, that's the shape G add six. If you take this and move this back a half a step, right, that chord is an F sharp 11. Great sounding chord, right? Move it back a half step again. Now you're on this first fret root, low E string. Remember, these are all low E string roots. So that chord now becomes an F major seven with a sharp 11, right? Really nice. They don't sound nice on every fret, like on the fourth fret, but on the fifth fret, That would be an A add nine, because we're adding that open B note, which is a second or nine, the key of A, A add nine. And then if you go up to the B, which is at the seventh fret, this is gonna be called a B add 11, because we're adding the E, or four, the high E, 11 in the key of B. And then take it up another half step to the C, C major seven, beautiful chord. And remember, all of these, I want you to get that high E and the B open. And you can even go up to the 10th fret D, D note here on the low E string, and this would be like a D6-9 chord. And then if you go up one more fret, it's kind of tough to get on the acoustic, but at the 12th fret, that's your E chord. Right, same kind of, sounds like an open E. Right, but you gotta get it in. So let's just go and do a couple practice progressions. Let's take the B chord, which is your add 11 at the seventh fret, and let's just change between that and the A. A chord, A root, which is the A add nine at the fifth fret. 
So let's just do an easy pattern like this between the chords, like down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down. That pattern sound like this. Let's take another progression. Let's do a four chord progression. Let's, this time let's go from the A root pseudo bar chord A at nine. And this time go up to the eighth fret to that C major seven. Then down to the G at six. Then down to the first fret. F major seven sharp 11, right? Let's see what that sounds like. Same strum pattern. Great practice to get you moving these around. So let's do another one. This time, let's see if we can go way up here to that E. Right? And then let's go down to the C. That's a E chord, pseudo bar chord to the C. And then to the G. Add six to the F major seven sharp 11. So you're at that 12th fret, to the eighth fret, to the third fret, to the first fret. So we'll do the same strum pattern. having trouble with your chord changing or your fingers, you want to make sure you're using the proper chord changing techniques and I can help you with that. I'll send you a very detailed free video lesson with six absolutely critical chord changing techniques plus chord changing exercises and practice templates. It's a phenomenal video. I'll send it to you for free. Just click on that link in the YouTube description box, I'll send you the free video lesson on chord changing and my free ebook. Now we're going to do the fifth string root, and this one we're going to only use the three fingers on the fifth fret, okay? And that is our D note. If you play a D fifth power chord, right, um, you have your third finger on the seventh fret on the D string and your pinky right below that, nice and tight, uh, hitching a ride on that third finger on the G string on the seventh fret, right? So you have this. Notice again how it's so important to have this proper positioning. For all of these fifth string root pseudo bar chords, and in fact, for just about all of your fifth string bar chords in general, we have to mute the sixth string. We want to mute that string. So when we play the chord, right, we want to not hear that low E string. You have to let this first finger spill over just to touch that low E string. And you could see in the close-up how I'm letting that spill over to just touch it, to mute it. It doesn't have to be way up here, right? Just enough to touch it. That's what you want. And again, this finger is hooked, not flat yet. So again, what we want to do here is play this B and high E open with the power chord shape. So basically, here's the chord, and on the D, right, this is going to be called a D6 sus2 chord. If so you move that down a whole step, that's going to be a C major 7. If you were to move that chord back a half a step, you're on the second fret, that's a B note, that would be a B sus4 or B suspended 4. C major 7, right? And there's our D6 sus2. Now if you move it up to the 7th fret, just our basic E chord. And then if you go up to the 9th fret, which is our F sharp note, it becomes an F sharp 7th sus4. So you're playing 9, 11, 11, open, open. Not playing the low E string. Let's take the 7th fret on the E, our E chord, down to the C, which is C major 7, which is a really nice change, that E 
to C major 7. And we could do that uh, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. Just go back and forth. Two times on the strum for each chord. Let's add two more chords to that. So we'll go from the E to the C major 7. Then let's go up to that D, D6 sus2, right? And then down to the B sus4. Let's try that, see how that sounds. So this time, let's start on the uh, ninth fret, on that F sharp 7 sus4, then down to the D, D6 sus2 at the 5th fret, up to that E at the 7th fret, and down to the C major 7 at the 3rd fret. So you get this. And you could take that around a few more times, mix those up. Let's try to combine the fifth string pseudo bar chords with a sixth string uh, pseudo bar chord. It's a tongue twister saying that, but uh, so take the D on the fifth string root, which is our D6 sus2, then go up to the G add six on the third fret low E string root, then down to the C major seventh fifth, fifth string root, and then go back to the sixth string root to our A add nine. So let's do a pattern maybe a little easier for you just to concentrate more on the chords. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. So two measures per chord. Let's see how it sounds. those exercises. Move them around the neck, come up with your own progressions on them, stick them into some of the songs as substitutes for bar chords. Click the link below. Don't forget to get the free chord changing uh, tips and techniques that'll really help you along in your guitar journey. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Got lots more killer videos coming up. Click the like button, hit the thumbs up if you like the video, and leave a comment below. I'm David Taub. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your support over the years. So appreciate it. Um, stay positive. Just remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. And I'll see you in the next lesson.